Now this paint, I've just done a few loose pencil, uh, pencil lines. I've just made this one up. I've got a little gate there, yeah, someone will probably be walking up to that. That'll be like a little focal point. I mean, a few, like a, like a valley scene with a few trees either side and a winding path. So, starting off with the hip as usual. Just soak the paper all over. Clean water using a large, large oak brush. I'm just going to dip the tips in just to bring the ears back together. And then um, let's try uh, light red, lemon yellow, a nice sort of orangey glow, something like that. Clean the brush. Um, let's try light, light red, a bit of ultramarine in it. Few clouds up there. Same so mix again. Maybe a little bit darker. Don't want to paint over this light so there in the middle. I'm trying to get some nice, uh, interesting colours going. Light red, ultramarine, a bit of crimson as well in there. See what that looks like? Not looking too bad. A right, bit of light red on its own. See how strong that is now. Got to be very, very careful with the light red and with the crimson, both the reds. Very strong colours. Crimson, ultramarine. A few little clouds going off into the distance. I'm going to be um, a bit more on first before I start doing the white clouds. Piece of tissue, Got a few in there. Now I've got a new piece of tissue that I will add in the other paintings recently, so you can see how the Clouds are coming off a lot stronger this time. If you want these wipes a bit subtle, then use a dirty tissue. Let's just try and get a little bit narrower. So I'll sort of come in something like that across there. And then, so I'm going to have the profile of the trees up here. So I just want to lighten that a little bit. Look as if there's some clouds coming up over the top of the trees. I'll do for that for over two minutes, really. Um, so, same colour. Um, I said trees. Put trees in if you want. I'm just going to put in sort of mountain side there, hills. And then, so, same on this side as well. And because it's the same colour as the sky. Makes it look really far away, helps with your distance. You know, put it down. And I'm just going to leave a little gap there. Right, put some trees in there if you want. Add a bit of lemon yellow into the mix. This mix now is a bit darker. And a bit of Payne's grey as well. A few on this side. Bring them down to the bottom. Just a bit of ultramarine, I mean yellow, Payne's grey. And then right down the valley floor. Look, just your little fingernail, suggest a few trunks. If you don't like any, just paint straight over them. A few more on this side.
paper strip start there, so I'm just going to pull it tight so it's flat again. You can stretch it before it starts to paint if you, if you prefer it that way. I prefer to do it as I go along. So I'm going to clean the brush, just take the excess off with the uh, lip on the uh, water jar, a bit more on the tissue, on the paper towel, packet towel, tea towel. I'm just going to go raw sienna. Also, yeah, a bit of lemon yellow in there as well. And just push that right up to that tree line. Yeah, I'll show range just to vary. Add the greens a bit. Trying to bear the landscape because I'm coming down to keep it interesting. Come that down to about there. Same on the other side. Just bring that down to the start of where the path's going to be. A bit of brown there, some muddy patches. And I'm just need to decide what colour my path's going to be. I might go similar, similar sky colours to the sky, so a bit of crimson, a bit of light red, a bit of blue, not too wet, and then just sweep it in. Try and just put it in once if you can. See where it breaks here yeah, when even where you got the whites of the paper showing through underneath. Just adds a bit of texture to it. Clean the brush, a bit of lemon yellow, a bit of raw sienna, just push that right up to the path, same on the other side, ultramarine, raw sienna, burnt umber, lemon yellow, just see so I'm just barely in it as I come down. Now this is the advantage of having a well-worn in hake. See what I find is, I'll have to get a new one to compare it, but I'm sure the new one, the hairs will be about up to there. Obviously the shorter it is, the less water it holds. And so it just becomes easy to go around. You don't get so much water on your brush and you can do things like this a lot easier. Just go around the colours and get this variation. I only found when I bought this, bought this new hike a few months ago, I realised just how, much, how difficult it is with all the extra water on. I wish you could just buy them. I might just try trimming the next one, see how we get on. Just trim it to start with, to try and get it down to this level. So there's our landing. I think that's enough variation for now. Um, what I might do is just uh, I used to leave all the white areas. I might just just try filling them in with a bit of bit of raw sienna. Just filling in all those little white gaps bits. Just helps with the variation as well. Maybe a bit of lemon yellow as well, just going around, filling all those in. So the more variation you've got, the, the better it will look, the more realistic it looks. It's all about resisting the temptation to just go crazy and just put it on in great big massive swathes. Just little bits in and there. Just do a few dabs and stop and look at it, see what it looks like. Uh, there's a little gate there, so I'll see if I can put that in without getting the air dried out first, having to dry it. So, the paper might still be a bit damp, so I want this brush as 
dry as I can get it really. Because there's already water on the uh, paper. To get a sharp image. I should dry it first really, but I'll see how I get on. I'm just using this little flat brush. I'll just I'm getting a bit bigger than what it is in the uh, Preliminary sketch, so it's just like a few little posts in. A few on this side as well. That's in there. And sometimes. I'm going to start to drag it down a little bit. It's not quite. I need a bit wetter. I'm not really demonstrating very well there, but if you put it on, if, if it's wet enough, sometimes you can just put it on and just catch the bottom and just pull it out. It's just like instant shadows without even trying. Switching to the uh, rigger. Let's just pop a little figure in there. Number three, we go. Just like that. And just not too much water. Just pop a little little figure leading. Actually, I think that'd be not coming up very well. Finish it off with a couple of birds. Just trying to get these as small as possible. I'm going to call that one finished. Just pop my name in the corner. Remember to sign it. Let's have a closer look and see what it looks like close up. So here's our finished painting. So let's have a look at the sky first place. You can see the uh, clouds I put in with the tissue. A few more on the other side. One of the advantages is it helps, you, helps bring out the profile of the uh, mountain side. Then we've got our trees. A bit of pine's grown there to really darken it up. A few uh, fingernail marks scraped out to suggest the branches and uh, trunks coming down the hillside. Same on the other side. You see how easy you can suggest the trunks going right down into the valley distance. And you see not really much happening on this uh, land, land as it comes down towards the path there. But by constantly changing the colour, you can see how you can still make it interesting. Same on the other side, various mixes. We've got our, uh, all the, the greens, the lemon yellows, ultramarines, Payne's grey, bit of burnt umber in there. Just keep varying it as you come down right into the foreground. Never put a straight path in, always give it a bit of a wind and a sort of snaky shape off into the distance with our little figure there just about to go through the gate. Well I hope you like that, thanks for watching, keep practicing, any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.